Apotheosis from Greek apotheosis from apothean, apothean, to deify, in Latin deificatio, making divine, also called divinization and deification is the glorification of a subject to divine level. The term has meanings in theology, where it refers to a belief, and in art, where it refers to a genre. In theology, apotheosis refers to the idea that an individual has been raised to godlike stature. In art, the term refers to the treatment of any subject a figure, group, locale, motif, convention or melody in a particularly grand or exalted manner. Antiquity Before the Hellenistic period, imperial cults were known in ancient Egypt pharaohs and Mesopotamia since Naram Sin. From the New Kingdom, all deceased pharaohs were deified as the god Osiris. <inaudible> ancient Greece From at least the geometric period of the 9th century BC, the long-deceased heroes linked with founding myths of Greek sites were accorded thonic rites in their Haroon, or hero temple. In the Greek world, the first leader who accorded himself divine honors was Philip II of Macedon. At his wedding to his sixth wife, Philip's enthroned image was carried in procession among the Olympian gods. His example at Aigi became a custom, passing to the Macedonian kings who were later worshipped in Greek Asia, from them to Julius Caesar and so to the emperors of Rome. Such Hellenistic state leaders might be raised to a status equal to the gods before death, e.g., Alexander the Great, or afterwards, e.g., members of the Ptolemaic dynasty. A heroic cult status similar to apotheosis was also an honor given to a few revered artists of the distant past, notably Homer. Archaic and classical Greek hero cults became primarily civic, extended from their familial origins. In the 6th century, by the 5th century, none of the worshippers based their authority by tracing descent back to the hero, with the exception of some families who inherited particular priestly cults, such as the Eumolpides descended from Eumolpus of the Eleusinian Mysteries, and some inherited priesthoods at oracle sites. The Greek hero cults can be distinguished on the other hand from the Roman cult of dead emperors, because the hero was not thought of as having ascended to Olympus or become a god, he was beneath the earth, and his power purely local. For this reason hero cults were thonic in nature, and their rituals more closely resembled those for Hecate and Persephone than those for Zeus and Apollo. Two exceptions were Heracles and Asclepius, who might be honored as either gods or heroes, sometimes by thonic nighttime rites and sacrifice on the following day. Ancient Rome Up to the end of the Republic, Romans accepted only one official apotheosis, the god Quirinus, whatever his original meaning, having been identified with Romulus. Subsequently, apotheosis in ancient Rome was a process whereby a deceased ruler was recognized as having been divine by his successor, usually also by a decree of the Senate and popular consent. In addition to showing respect, often the present ruler deified a popular predecessor to legitimize himself and gain popularity with the people. The upper class did not always take part in the imperial cult, and some privately ridiculed the apotheosis of inept and feeble emperors, as in the satire the pumpkinification of the divine Claudius, usually attributed to Seneca. At the height of the imperial cult during the Roman Empire, sometimes the emperor's deceased loved ones, Heirs, empresses, or lovers, as Hadrian's Antinous, were deified as well. Deified people were awarded posthumously the title divus diva if women to their names to signify their divinity. Traditional Roman religion distinguished between a deus god and a divus a mortal who became divine or deified, though not consistently. Temples and columns were erected to provide a space for worship. Ancient China The Ming Dynasty epic investiture of the gods deals heavily with deification legends. Numerous mortals have been deified into the Taoist pantheon, such as Guan Yu, Iron Crutch Li and Fan Kue. Song Dynasty General Yu Fei was deified during the Ming Dynasty and is considered by some practitioners to be one of the three highest-ranking heavenly generals. Southeast Asia and North Korea 
Various Hindu and Buddhist rulers in the past have been represented as deities, especially after death, from Thailand to Indonesia. Even several sultans of Yogyakarta were semi-deified, posthumously. Deceased North Korean leader Kim Il-sung is the principal object of the North Korean cult of personality in which he is treated similarly to an explicitly apotheosized leader, with statues of and monuments dedicated to the eternal president. The annual commemoration of his birth, the paying of respects by newlyweds to his nearest statue, and the North Korean calendar being a Juche calendar based on Kim Il-sung's date of birth. Christianity Generally Instead of the word, apotheosis, Christian theology uses in English the words, deification, or divinization, or the Greek word, theosis. Traditional mainstream theology, both East and West, views Jesus Christ as the pre-existing God who undertook mortal existence, not as a mortal being who attained divinity. It holds that he has made it possible for human beings to be raised to the level of sharing the divine nature, he became one of us to make us partakers of the divine nature. For this is why the Word became man, and the Son of God became the Son of man, so that man, by entering into communion with the Word and thus receiving divine sonship, might become a Son of God. For he was made man that we might be made God. The only begotten Son of God, wanting to make us sharers in his divinity, assumed our nature, so that he, made man, might make men gods. The Westminster Dictionary of Christian Theology contains the following in an article titled, Deification. Deification Greek theosis is for orthodoxy the goal of every Christian. Man, according to the Bible, is made in the image and likeness of God. It is possible for man to become like God, to become deified, to become God by grace. This doctrine is based on many passages of both OT and NT EGPs. 82 2 Peter 1.4, and it is essentially the teaching both of St. Paul, though he tends to use the language of filial adoption cf. Rom, 8.9, 17, Gal, 4.5, 7, and the fourth gospel cf. 17.21, 23. The language of 2 Peter is taken up by St. Irenaeus, in his famous phrase, If the word has been made man, it is so that men may be made gods ADV. Haerv, pref, and becomes the standard in Greek theology. In the 4th century, Saint Athanasius repeats Irenaeus almost word for word, and in the 5th century Saint Cyril of Alexandria says that we shall become sons by participation Greek methexis. Deification is the central idea in the spirituality of Saint Maximus the Confessor, for whom the doctrine is the corollary of the Incarnation. Deification, briefly, is the encompassing and fulfillment of all times and ages, and Saint Simeon the new theologian at the end of the 10th century writes, He who is God by nature converses with those whom he has made gods by grace, as a friend converses with his friends, face to face. Eastern Christianity Eastern Christian theology does not use the term apotheosis. Roman Catholic Church The Roman Catholic Church also does not use the term apotheosis. Corresponding to the Greek word theosis are the Latin derived words divinization and deification used in the parts of the catholic church that are of latin tradition the concept has been given less prominence in western theology than in that of the eastern catholic churches but is present in the latin church's liturgical prayers such as that of the deacon or priest when pouring wine and a little water into the chalice by the mystery of this water and wine may we come to share in the divinity of christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity the Catechism of the Catholic Church quotes with approval St. Athanasius as saying, The Son of God became man so that we might become God. Catholic theology stresses the concept of supernatural life, a new creation and elevation, a rebirth, it is a participation in and partaking of the divine nature. Cf. 2 Peter 1 verse 4. 
In Catholic teaching there is a vital distinction between natural life and supernatural life, the latter being, "...the life that God, in an act of love, freely gives to human beings to elevate them above their natural lives." and which they receive through prayer and the sacraments. Indeed the Catholic Church sees human existence as having as its whole purpose the acquisition, preservation and intensification of this supernatural life. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints LDS Church or Mormons believes in apotheosis along the lines of the Christian tradition of divinization or deification but refers to it as exaltation, or eternal life, and considers it to be accomplished by sanctification. It believes that people may live with God throughout eternity in families and eventually become gods themselves but remain subordinate to God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. While the primary focus of the LDS Church is on Jesus of Nazareth and his atoning sacrifice for man, Mormons believe that one purpose for Christ's mission and for his atonement is the exaltation or Christian deification of man. The third article of faith of Mormon Christianity states that all men may be saved from sin by the atonement of Jesus Christ, and LDS Gospel Doctrine as published, states that all men will be saved and will be resurrected from death. However, only those who are sufficiently obedient and accept the atonement and the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ before the resurrection and final judgment will be exalted and receive a literal Christian deification. One popular Mormon quote, often attributed to the early Mormon leader Lorenzo Snow in 1837, is, As man now is, God once was, as God now is, man may be. The teaching was taught first by Joseph Smith while he was pointing to John chapter 5 verse 19 in the New Testament, he said that, "...God himself, the Father of us all, dwelt on an earth, the same as Jesus Christ himself did." Many LDS and non-LDS scholars also have discussed the correlation between Mormon belief in exaltation and the ancient Christian theosis, or deification, as set forth by early church fathers. Several LDS and non-LDS historians specializing in studies of the early Christian Church also claim that the Mormon belief in eternal progression is more similar to the ancient Christian deification as set forth in numerous patristic writings of the 1st to 4th centuries AD than the beliefs of any other modern faith group of the Christian tradition. Mormons believe that the original Christian belief in man's divine potential gradually lost its meaning and importance in the centuries after the death of the Apostles, as doctrinal changes by post-apostolic theologians caused Christians to lose sight of the true nature of God and his purpose for creating humanity. The concept of God's nature that was eventually accepted as Christian doctrine in the 4th century set divinity apart from humanity by defining the Godhead as three persons sharing a common divine substance. That classification of God in terms of a substance is not found in Scripture but, in many aspects, mirrored the Greek metaphysical philosophies that are known to have influenced the thinking of Church Fathers such as Justin Martyr, Origen, and Augustine. Mormons teach that by modern revelation, God restored the knowledge that He is the literal Father of our spirits Hebrews chapter 12 verse 9 and that the biblical references to God creating mankind in His image and likeness are in no way allegorical. As such, Mormons assert that as the literal offspring of God the Father Acts chapter 17 verses 28 to 29, humans have the potential to be heirs of his glory and co-heirs with Christ Romans chapter 8 verses 16 to 17. The glory, Mormons believe, lies not in God's substance but in his intelligence, in other words, light and truth doctrine and covenants 93 to 36. Thus, the purpose of humans is to grow and progress to become like the Father in heaven. Mortality is seen as a crucial step in the process in which God's spirit children gain a body, which, though formed in the image of the Father's body, is subject to pain, illness, temptation, and death. The purpose of this earth life is to learn to choose the right in the face of that opposition, thereby gaining essential experience and wisdom. The level of intelligence we attain in this life will rise in the resurrection Doctrine and Covenants 130-18-19. Bodies will then be immortal like those of the Father and the Son Philippians chapter 3 verse 21, but the degree of glory to which each person will resurrect is contingent upon the final judgment Revelation chapter 20 verse 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 40 to 41. Those who are worthy to return to God's presence can continue to progress towards a fullness of God's glory, which Mormons refer to as eternal life, or exaltation doctrine and covenant 76. 
The LDS concept of apotheosis – exaltation is expressed in LDS scriptures Messiah 319, Alma 1312, D&C 78-7, D&C 78-22, D&C 84-4, D&C 84-23, D&C 88-68, D&C 93-28 and is expressed by a member of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, though stretched by our challenges, by living righteously and enduring well we can eventually become sufficiently more more like Jesus in our traits and attributes, that one day we can dwell in the Father's presence forever and ever. Neil Maxwell, October 1997. In early 2014, the LDS Church published an essay on the official church website specifically addressing the foundations, history, and official beliefs regarding apotheosis. The essay addresses the scriptural foundations of this belief, teachings of the early church fathers on the subject of deofficiation, and the teachings of LDS church leaders, starting with Joseph Smith. In art In art the matter is practical, the elevation of a figure to divine level entails certain conventions. So it is that the apotheosis genre exists in Christian art as in other art. The features of the apotheosis genre may be seen in subjects that emphasize Christ's divinity transfiguration, ascension, Christ Pantocrator and that depict holy persons in glory. That is, in their roles as God revealed, assumption, ascension, etc. Later artists have used the concept for motives ranging from genuine respect for the deceased Constantino Brumidi's fresco The Apotheosis of Washington on the Dome of the United States Capitol Building in Washington, D.C., to artistic comment Salvador Dali's or Angra's The Apotheosis of Homer, to mock heroic and burlesque apotheoses for comedic effect. Many modern leaders have exploited the artistic imagery if not the theology of apotheosis. Examples include Rubens's depictions of James I of England at the Banqueting House an expression of the divine right of kings or Henry IV of France, or Appiani's apotheosis of Napoleon. The C. H. Niehaus designed apotheosis of St. Louis, Louis IX of France became a symbol for St. Louis Mo. The term has come to be used figuratively to refer to the elevation of a dead leader often one who was assassinated and or martyred to a kind of superhuman charismatic figure and an effective erasing of all faults and controversies which were connected with his name in life, for example, Abraham Lincoln in the U.S., Lenin in the USSR, Yitzchak Rabin in Israel, or Kim Jong-il in North Korea. In music. Apotheosis in music refers to the appearance of a theme in grand or exalted form. It represents the musical equivalent of the apotheosis genre in visual art, especially where the theme is connected in some way with historical persons or dramatic characters. When crowning the end of a large-scale work the apotheosis functions as a peroration, following an analogy with the art of rhetoric. Apotheosis moments abound in music, and the word itself appears in some cases. In the list of compositions by François Couperin there are three suites entitled Apotheoses, 1724, Hector Berlioz used Apotheos as the title of the final movement of his Grande Symphonie Funebre et Triomphale, a work composed in 1846 for the dedication of a monument to France's war dead. Two of Pyotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky's ballets, The Sleeping Beauty and The Nutcracker, contain apotheoses as finales, the same is true of Ludwig Minkus's La Bayadere. Igor Stravinsky's composed Orpheus ballet and Apollo ballet for choreographer George Balanchine which both contain episodes entitled Apotheos. The concluding tableau of Maurice Ravel's Ma Mire Loy is also titled Apotheos. Czech composer Karol Husa, concerned in 1970 about arms proliferation and environmental deterioration, named his musical response Apotheosis for this earth. Aram Kachaturian entitled a segment of his ballet Spartacus. Sunrise and Apotheosis, Richard Wagner, referring to the lively rhythms which permeate Ludwig van Beethoven's Symphony No. 7, called it the Apotheosis of the Dance. Alexander Glazunov's ballet The Seasons, Op. 67 has as the concluding movement, Autumn, Scene and Apotheosis. American technical death metal band The Faceless explored the idea of apotheosis in the first three tracks of their 2012 album Autotheism. The first three tracks are one song broken into three parts called The Autotheism Movement. Music 
Topic See also Topic References and further reading Arthur E. R. Boke. The Theoretical Basis of the Deification of Rulers in Antiquity. In, Classical Journal Vol. 11, 1916, pp. 293–297. Franz Bomer. Onenkult und Onunglaub im Alten Rom. Leipzig 1943. Walter Burkert. Caesar und Romulus Quirinus. In, Historia Vol. 11, 1962, pp. 356–376. Jean-Claude Richard. Ani, Romulus, César et les funérailles impériales. In, Melanges de l'école française de Rome Vol. 78, 1966, pp. 67–78. Bernadette Liu Guile. Divinisation des morts dans la Rome ancienne. In, Revue Belgique de Philologie Vol. 71, 1993, pp. 107–115. David Engels. Postia dictus est inter deos receptus. Wetterzauber und Königsmord, zu den Hintergrunden der Vergottlichung Fuhramischer Konig. In, Gymnasium Vol. 114, 2007, pp. 103–130. Stephen King, The Dark Tower, The Gunslinger. King David Kalakaua, The Apotheosis of Pele, The Adventures of the Goddess with Kamapua. In the Legends and Myths of Hawaii. Garnett, Richard, Macintosh, Robert, 1911. Apotheosis. In Chisholm, Hugh. Encyclopædia Britannica, 2, 11th ed. Cambridge University Press, pp. 206-207. External links Seneca's Apocalyscentosis at Project Gutenberg François Couperin, L'Apotheus de Corelli, at IMSLP François Couperin, L'Apotheus de Lully, at IMSLP